Happy to be joined by Brandon Royville, who is back in action, taking on Matthias Nicolau next Saturday, UFC Kansas City. Brandon, uh, good to talk to you. This is the third time we're doing this. We've had some tech issues, but uh, <laughs> glad to be talking to you, man. Glad to be talking to you too, man. Sorry about all that. Oh, don't worry. Listen, it's uh, technology. We deal with it uh, all the time here. Um, I know it was a rough 2022 for you uh, at, at the latter part of it. Obviously, you had the two opponents and you had the broken wrist. Uh, how tough was that uh, to get through and uh, kind of be off for this long? Um, it, it kind of did suck, man. Uh, I feel like I, wa- I walked into 2022 and I'm like, I'm going to pop off fights back to back to back and go on a huge roll. And uh just wasn't the case. I had two fights back to back. And then uh, the third fight was like uh, they, they made the third fight kind of a distance away. And then Askrab pulled out. And then I was like, fuck it. I'll take a short notice against this uh, Amir Al-Bazi who was like number 10 or 11 or something. I was like, I'll take a short notice for him. And uh, broke my wrist in the process of that. So it was just uh, I was trying I was trying to fight as much as possible. Like in my in my head, I was like, "Dang, I'm gonna make a bunch of money this year. I'm gonna make statements. I'm gonna go take these short notice fights against uh, opponents ranked behind me." And then, uh, you know, I, I was just trying to do all the good things that I could to to get in the good graces of being in a UFC title shot, and uh, just never really worked out. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that I'm finally gonna fight and uh, just kind of getting used to getting on the swing of things again, you know? Was there any talk of rebooking the Albazi fight? Obviously, he's fighting Kai Kara France now. Uh, was, was there any talks of that, or was it just you wanted to fight as soon as possible? Yeah, uh, there was there was talks about that. I think he's he was injured, so he had to wait uh, wait a little bit. So there was talks about doing that in London or, like, the week before or the week after. Or was it you know, London or, like, UK or something like that? Yeah, yeah, no, it was London. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah and I, that was supposed to happen, which I was – I was I, I my coach wasn't really stoked about leaving the states or like whatever, but I was stoked. I've never like I'm not much of a traveler. I haven't been much of a traveler, so the UFC's been the best uh, the best way I can get a, a nice little cheap ticket out of here real quick. So uh, I was pretty stoked about that. And uh, he was injured, so uh, it wasn't really meant to be. And I kind of wanted to fight someone higher ranked, anyways. And uh, I knew uh, I knew during that timeline, like within that month, is just like the whole flyweight division was going to be open. There's everybody in the top five had needed an opponent, so it was like. I know I could fit in better there. I would rather be fighting someone in the top five than the the top ten, you know? Yeah. No, no, I, I get it, man. And uh, look, you got a pretty awesome opponent here in, in Nicolau. Uh, stylistically, how are you looking at this one? Uh, you know, you guys are both high level. This is going to be a great fight. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, stylistically, we're uh, we're almost opposites a little bit. As far as, like, striking goes, is he's really... I think where he shines is he's super patient and uh, a little bit of my downfall is I'm not that patient, you know, is I, I kind of want to make things happen. So uh, stylistically, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of a change for me and it's going to be a, a lot of reading things on the fly. And uh, I've had a lot of good training partners to mimic him and a lot better, uh, you know, he's a counter striker and I feel like I train with a lot better counter striker with a lot better footwork and all that stuff. So uh, stylistically, um, I mean, I think if we're looking at paper, it's pretty much a nightmare matchup for me. But that being said, is I have the I have the 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 teammates, the the key around me, and all that stuff that I know I can get this job done. I know I can get a finish, and I know I can go out there and make a statement on um, Mateus Nikolai. Let's talk about your training partners. Who are you mainly working with for 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 this camp? Um, I I always feel like uh, he's always my main training partner, but he does such a good job at mimicking and studying my opponents that he's just. You know, and he's also like my best friend. So I have Clay. I have Clay. Um, he's gonna go out there. His name's Clay Matza. He'll go out there, corner me, and uh, he does all studying and he mimics Mateus Nikolai perfectly. So uh, it was fun getting to work with him. The first couple months, or the first month of it, the first weeks of it, was so frustrating because I'm like, I just want to fight him. You know, I want to go in there and just swing and do just be myself. And it's like uh, with Mateus Nikolai, I think there will be times to be myself, but I think for the most part, I'm gonna have to be a little calculated and. Uh, change things so uh and then i had a chris gutierrez i think is a really good counter striker he uses a lot i mean he's in ramadan right now but uh leading up to it he's been nothing but a blessing and it's just like those those have been some of the main guys that i try to get to emulate Mateus nikolai and how's it been in the gym there's been a lot of new fighters coming through um like i know for example like julian marquez david onama you get like a lot of these guys coming over and then i even know anthony smith's back so it must be cool to have like i know you don't train with all those guys but just to have that variety in the gym just to have the different personalities must be cool for you guys who've been like ogs from the factory x team yeah yeah for sure i've known i've known uh julian marquez 
Uh, we fought on the same combate card for years, so it was, it was cool to kind of get a reunion with him. David Oyama is a sweet man. Uh, it, it's really cool to have him in the gym. He's a, He's been a blessing of a training partner, too. He pushes the pace and has a wide skill set, and uh, I, I was really excited to get him as a training partner. And, uh, yeah, Anthony Smith is a, a team leader, so it's always cool, cool to have him around. But, yeah, I mean, Factor X is just, like, like in the gym right now, it's – and especially the environment, we have a. I think we have not fifteen is way too much. We have like at least twelve people fighting that week of the fifteenth and sixteenth, um, and we have four guys on the card in the UFC. And it's just like uh, I feel like the environment in these last couple of weeks. I've never seen some of these guys uh, push the pace that they've been pushing, or like carry a workload, or just be so dialed in. And uh, it's been really cool. We can all feed off each other, and then the team success alone has been amazing. So. Uh, Kind of just seeing each other, dialing in, dialing it in together, and uh, having a big old training camp with all of each other has been a blessing, honestly. How's this fight playing out? You're the next snatcher. It seems you get all these wins by submission. Is that how we're going to see this one go on April fifteenth, or what's your prediction? I could see that happening for sure. Um, I, I picture the fight playing out slow at the beginning, and uh, me finding moments to make it chaotic. And uh, when I find those moments, is when I shine. And uh, I don't think that he likes that very much. So it's a uh, it's kind of like once again, it's just a contrast of styles. But I know, uh, I know he's gonna give me moments to shine and do what I do, and uh, in those moments, I'll capitalize for sure. So, uh, snap, snatching next, cash and checks. So, I mean, that's the main goal, no matter what. But uh, I could see it going that way. But I could also see like a TKO, or I do see a finish though. I, I, that's what all I'm aiming for. Back to your division. Are you kind of happy that they, it seems like this Dave, well, it is now that this Davis and Figueroa, Brandon Moreno carousel is finally over with Brandon winning. And now Davison look like he's going to 35. Is that kind of a relief for you guys? Cause you guys have been kind of held up to a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And I feel like they did what's necessary for the division. They, uh, they boosted the popularity of the division for sure. But that being said, it's just like, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I could have beat either one of those two. So, uh, it was just kind of like annoying, like, withholding the vision and i feel i feel bad for pantoja if anybody but that being said is uh um i'm glad it's over i'm glad that that figgy is uh moved on or whatever and uh, i think that makes me number three in the world so uh i can't wait to see them change those rankings honestly and then honestly it makes me number two in the world because i beat kai car france so i'm somewhere even higher so this should be a title contender fight in my eyes and, and there's a lot of up-and-comers in your division, too. Like, if you look at, uh, you know, you mentioned Amir Al-Bazi, you've got Mohamed Mokayev, you've got, um, you know, Menel Kopp. Like, what do you think of the division? It seems like it's really sort of thriving. I mean, it was before, but even more so now with Davison kind of exiting, it seems like we're finally going to get this, you know, new flush of fighters uh, come through in the contenders, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like I said, I think that they do nothing but have exciting flyweights. Uh, and, I'm like, they, they only bring exciting flyweights. And I know that... Even to a certain degree, certain fighters are going to get cut or not cut because they don't bring excitement. And your boy might have saved someone's career by calling someone out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But that being said is just uh, I feel like this is the most exciting the flyweight division has been. And uh, I 100% feel like I'm the most exciting flyweight fighter in the division. So it, it's exciting times. And uh, I think it's a real good time to just anybody go and grab the belt right now. And uh, I really do believe it's my time to be doing that. How many more fights you have left in your contract? You know, um, two more. Okay, awesome. Gotcha. So that that that's good. And uh, hopefully, after I beat this fool, we can just renegotiate a title shot contract, and then we could be talking big numbers from there on out because uh, your boy needs it. <laughs> no, no, for sure. And obviously, we know the story with you uh, leaving your job and everything as well. So this is this is the second last one. This one, and then you have one more after this, or is it two after this fight? Um, I think it's two after, or this one, and then one more. Okay, gotcha. So big fight. I mean, obviously, yeah, a lot, lot on the line there is good. Uh, you know, I got to get some hockey in here. You're watching the Avs, and I think they're going to make the playoffs. They've had some injuries, though. Yeah, I, I mean, not necessarily. I've been watching too much of the Avs, but uh, we're going from being uh, Stanley Cup champions to maybe not making the playoffs is kind of... Uh, but little, there's been injuries, uh, though, to be fair. Like, you guys still have a really good team. It's just it's a matter yeah, of, like, just not having a healthy team. Big, and all the big guys are, like, injured. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sucks, but... I know we're, we have a young team, man, and eventually we're going to go get that cup again. Yeah, and uh, we got to watch this fight, man. Next uh, Saturday, UFC Fight Night, UFC Kansas City. Uh, Brandon, if there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, yeah. Thank EP Glass. Uh, they've been with me since I've been in the UFC, and they've been nothing but a blessing. So I appreciate them. EP Glass, the best glass company in Denver, man. And thank you for your time. I appreciate you.